Good morning. It's Johnny Sunshine. It's Sunday. And it's late. It's damn 10.30 in the morning and I just woke up. What happened? Did they jump this clock ahead or something? So... <clears throat> Today Johnny's really going to curb the uh, talk about politics. There is a, a quote out there. Um, I don't know who came up with it, but it is something to the effect of my biggest fear is I become that which I despise the most. And unfortunately, this has happened to many, many, many people and families, uh, relationships uh, that we have devolved into uh, name calling, you know, demorats. <clears throat> Just, I'm guilty. I'm guilty of as charged uh, for doing that. And uh, the breaking point for me is a, a kid I grew up with. I mean, literally, I was probably seven, six years old when I met him. Uh, he was a lot older than me, probably five years older than me, uh, which was a lot of years, you know. I mean, he was a big guy. He was 10, you know. That was five or six. But, uh, I had some unresolved issues with this guy. I wanted to kick his ass since the time I was like 12, but he was older than me. You know, I was a little afraid of him. Uh, so, he got back in touch with me. I'll tell you why I wanted to kick his ass, because he was a hockey player, street hockey, and he was a little bit of a fucking bully because he was a little older. Uh, and one night we were all out playing street hockey in the schoolyard across the street from where I live. And you know those those uh, hockey street hockey balls, those orange fucking hard plastic balls. He just kept firing fucking slap shots at me up against the fence, you know. And a couple times he hit me, and. I was looking at him like, I just want to charge you and drop the gloves and beat your ass, you son of a bitch. Uh, and I never forgot that. <laughs> Imagine that. I mean, the guy's in his 60s now. He's probably 65. So, and he's a hardcore right winger. You know, he says he's not, he does, he's not associated. It's the same old bullshit. I'm not associated with any party. But all he bitches about is fucking the Democrats. So, you know. He's full of shit. The only one he's bullshitting is himself. Uh, so anyway, it's, it's been getting heated. I like to poke the bear. I like to have fun. And uh, yesterday, it got kind of ugly. He started talking about a, you know, coming at a woman or a girl that grew up on the same street. Uh... And he was coming pretty hard at her, you know. And this is what I mean about politics dividing people. And uh, really, it gets ugly. I mean, it has literally divided families. Uh, you know, people don't talk to each other because of their political views. But anyway, she kind of came, came pretty hard at, at this girl. And I said, you need to leave her out of this, pal. You know, and I kind of laughed, put a couple laughing emojis, but the point was out there that you need to chill out, man. You're going way beyond this little bit, you know, this back and forth, you know. And I realized that this shit's not a joke and it's not good for anybody. All this shit going on on my channel, what it's turned into, it's not what I want to do. Uh, so I need to cool it. I need to, um, there is, 
a vortex that sucks you in and it has divided this country and people are, you know, they've chosen sides and not, they're immovable. Nobody's gonna move, well, there are some voters in the middle. I, you know, I still believe Joe Biden's gonna win because there are a lot of Republicans, the, the ones, I'm not gonna get nasty and uh, demean the people who vote for him. But there are a lot of Republicans who simply will not vote for Donald Trump. You know, sexual assault. Eh, you are a real, like Mitt Romney came out. I just, you know, I just have to draw the line at sexual assault. Well, you know, that's great, Mitt. You're a real stand-up guy, you know. Whatever. Anyway, so I got to cool it on the politics. I have been fucking with this guy on Facebook. And I, I have fun with it. <laughs> it's not good, but now we have these 50-year relationships, and, and a lot of us haven't seen each other in 40, 50 years, but we're, we're family, man. We're, we grew up together in Providence, Rhode Island, on this one street, and that, you know, they had three tenement houses. There had to be 50 families in one block, you know, all these kids. And I consider them family. I consider my friend Alex family, and I consider Rosie family. And honestly, I've been, I've been the instigator. Like I have become what I despise the most. I've become the instigator. Uh, you know, just you can see it in my posts. So uh, Johnny needs to look at himself a little more. Not that anything I've said. Uh, is something I don't believe because I do believe everything I said. I just need to, I don't think that um, I'm accomplishing much. You know, fella, come on. Do you want to go in the house? Get in there. So, you guys out here in YouTube world, I don't care about you. I don't care what you say, you Trumpers. But it's gotten, it's getting close to home now with these people because the the girl that he came after, uh, she wrote a long post and, um, you know, was telling telling this guy that you're getting close to getting blocked, my friend, and you need. To, and she really came at him hard because he came at her hard, and I think that. Ultimately, I'm the one who instigated all of this uh, in the... So I feel bad about that. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to change my ways. Uh, so that's my quote of the day. My greatest fear is that I've become what I despise the most. Unknown. Who, who came up with that? But I want to tell you another... I got a fucking, let's go to straight to, to uh, hater mail this morning. One guy, he said he just started school up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And he said, all we do is watch your videos in class. And I was like, what did the teacher tell you? This is everything you don't want to do as a plumber? <laughs> I always wanted to be a teacher. Now I'm in the classroom. I think that's great, man. Uh, hopefully we can get back to just plumbing and me struggling as a, you know, comedian. But damn, it's late, guys. It's fucking 1030, man. The doggies woke me up. My clock said 6 o'clock, but it was actually 7. And I was like, it's Sunday morning, guys. Go to sleep. And then Gussie, he just lays there and makes all kinds of noise. Breathing heavy, blowing his hair away from his nostrils. I finally had to say, Gussie, shut the fuck up! <laughs> and uh, I didn't realize that the clocks got bounced ahead last night. I knew it was coming. I thought it was today that we set them ahead. Uh, well, tonight at midnight. Uh... Whatever, who cares? Uh, Johnny has a big, big mess. 
I'm sitting here in the middle of a, a trash heap. And I did have a terrible dream last night I gotta tell you guys about. I was working for a friend of mine. And this guy's a real service plumber. You know, when the phone rings, he goes. He don't give a fuck. Two o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, work all night. And you got to go to work at eight. It's eight o'clock. We're going to start a new day today. I'm like, I'm going fucking home, pal. We used to work in the hospital, under the hospital. These big, big sewer lines and uh, building drains. Everything's hanging, you know, and you work all night because everybody, everything's kind of shut down. And then he expected you to go work another eight hours, man. I was like, fuck that, pal. I'm going to bed. I'm going home, Jackson. But anyways, for some reason, me and him were in two of my trucks. We had to go to this place. Because there was a problem with the air conditioning unit, which is strange because he does air now too. Electrical and air conditioning. He started out as a plumber. But we drive up, and I don't know where we're going. We drive up, and it's a quick stop. And it's like the worst quick. There's like drug addicts and homeless people everywhere. It's horrible. It's like a, you know, a blue state. You know? Uh, but he parked the car in the gas line to get gas, you know? And he gets all this shit out. He climbs up on the roof. He forgot to go get fucking Freon or whatever he needed. It was just a mess, you know? And it's Friday night, man. And I'm thinking the whole time, I got to get my truck out of there, you know? Why we were in my truck, I don't know. Uh, I can tell you, I do know because I remember the whole dream, but it's a long story. Convoluted and fucking weird. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, I come out to move my truck and my fucking truck is gone. So I go in to the store... And I'm thinking somebody's got my truck, they're gonna steal all my shit out of it, you know? I go into the store, I asked the guy who's running the place, the manager, I said, who took my, where's my truck, man? He says, oh, some, two guys came in here, they bought, bought a bunch of single beers and they walked out and they jumped in your truck and left. I was like, what? So I fucking, I'm walking around this neighborhood looking for my truck, man. Talk about a fucked up dream. Then I get some fucking guy who's gonna help me. Kind of a redneck guy. And he's driving us around. Over one road had fucking like four feet deep of carpet remnants. And the homeless guys were stealing them. That one guy fell off a roof. Wrapped up in a carpet. What the fuck is this all about, man? I need a break. Nobody would put this shit on the YouTubes, but I don't care. So I finally had to wake up, and it's so nice when you wake up and realize your truck didn't get stolen. I had to look. I had to come in the kitchen and look. I looked out and said, oh, it's there. I wanted to run out and give my truck a fucking hug, man. It was a terrible dream. I finally just left the guy. He was on the roof. I was like... And then some service plumber shows up. He drives into the back of the store. And I was like, what are you doing here? He's like, I'm here to fix a drain problem. I said, oh, Terry's here. He said, Terry don't know what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> I was like, I gotta get out of here. I love my simple life. Putting garbage disposals in. Fixing fucked up toilet flanges. Johnny's been through some flanges, Jackson. I got to go to the sh supply house. You know, you really, when it comes to your truck and supplies, you really got to control. You know, if you go every time you 
you do a job and you replace what you took off the truck, you're always going to end up with fifty, sixty thousand dollars worth of shit on your truck, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, not good. So what I do is I'll go a month, you know, or two, where I'm staying away from the supply house, man. I'm feeding off of my truck, doing the best I can to get these jobs run uh, done properly but in the confines of what I have on my truck. There's a million ways to skin a cat. A million ways to do a plumbing job. You get a 50 plumbers together, they'll do the same job a little different. Just a few changes, you know? So it all depends on what you have on your truck, but I'll go a couple months, man, just feeding off the stock on my truck, and then I'll go and I'll finally uh, buy some stuff. And basically what I use is my list, I have lists for when I was doing new houses. I have a list for a rough in, which is everything you need for to rough a house in. And uh, I mean everything. It was a checklist that my guys got. They'd get a work order in the morning with the job, where the job was, and then the second page was a checklist. And I would have written in everything they need, you know. How many rolls of half inch copper, how many rolls of three quarter copper, tub boxes, shower wraps, you know, PVC pipe, the fittings, uh, give them a blueprint and a work order, you know, and uh, worked out good. But so those lists, I had the same list for tub set stage, second rough, I don't know, I always called it tub set. Second rough is usually for houses with a second floor. Uh, but. <clears throat> And then I have, have a list for a uh, trim out, which is everything right down to fucking hose clamp and screws uh, to put this house together. And I refer to those lists when it's time to restock my truck. I'll go through, I'll look at uh, what I have and, and what I need to get. You know, closet flanges, a million different kinds, offset flanges. Down here in Florida, we have a lot of offset flanges. These guys couldn't hit a fucking spot if they fucking, if their life depended on it. Let me tell you, when I was roughing houses in, man, I hate jackhammering with a fucking passion almost as much as I hate Donald Trump, but I'm gonna try to stop doing that, damn it! But, yeah, so it was, I'm gonna tell you how how we did it. We do the rough in, right? First you lay the house out. Put the PVC in the ground. Once the PVC is in the ground, before you fill that job up, you double check your measurements. You do lay the house out again. Check to make sure everything is right. If it is right, uh, then you go ahead and fill it up. Put your, now I think it's five foot of head pressure, maybe 10 feet. It used to be 10 feet of head pressure, but you fill the, the, the PVC up. But if when you're double checking, you see that something's wrong, uh, the fact that you're double checking before you fill it up with water, it makes the repair or moving a pipe, you know, if you put the, the pipes on the wrong side of a wall or whatever, uh, it makes changing that easy because it's not full of water. And I had, my trailer was set up where I had the water in a in a uh, tank on the trailer with my tractor, uh, with pumps, an air pump, and uh, a water pump. And we'd fill these roughings up. We'd fill up the, the water pipes with uh, water and then top it off with air, bring it up to about 110 110, 115 PSI so that when it cooled off during the uh, night, it wouldn't go below 100 PSI. But that's how we'd rough a house in. Double check it after the PVC's in the ground. If that's all correct, fill it up, loop out the copper, or uh, throw the CPVC in the ground, put your tub boxes down, wrap your showers with styrofoam, uh, so you can get the, the flange in with no problem. Another trick when it comes to those flanges, because there's a lot of lot of digging and shit down here in Florida. 
Uh, it's not uncommon, even though you put it in the ground and it's straight as can be and plumb, uh, you come on tub set and that shower riser will be crooked and it's because the concrete guys are dapping these showers out, they're putting, uh, you know, a form up and it could get moved, you know, so even after you've double checked. So what I, one of the tricks that I used to do was uh, making sure that that when I first started, we get calls from the tile guy, you know, and my, my boss would send me out to, you know, we've got a shower drain that's not level and the tile guy needs it level. So what I did on every house is I would take the strainer off. This is on tub set. I take the strainer off. Uh, the shower drain once I set it at the right height I put a heat gun down in that pipe and I heat it up and I just lay my level across the top of it so you can level it both ways and with the with the pipe hot you can tweak that drain so it's perfectly level in all directions hold it there let it let it set up and bada bing bada boom it's a very easy way to level uh, a drain I've seen guys out there with wood pieces of two by four hammering them over this way and that way just heat it up man heat it up and level it with a wait a minute uh -huh. that was a good one Johnny uh, cooked some ribs and some tuna fish last <laughs> ribs and tuna fish yeah that makes for an interesting uh, mixture coming out of your hind quarter so anyways it's a gorgeous day I am totally like camouflaged here look at this look at the leaves man the trees are all green look at most of the leaves on the uh, trees have come in and it's just a beautiful beautiful setting uh, I was thinking this morning when I woke up that, you know, maybe I need to just be content here, man, at my house, you know? Life's a long, long ride, man. Hopefully, for me, it will be. And uh, this, having a guest house and a big house, who knows what, what that holds for the future, you know? As people get older, they may need a place to stay and... And, uh, you know, this is a nice place, man. If I could find even family members, uh, it'd be nice, you know, to rekindle our relationships. I've been away from of most of my family for 36 years, you know. So I, I'm not as close with them as I used to be when we all lived together or they all came down here uh, every year with my mom. But... Uh, it's a beautiful morning. I worked my ass off yesterday cleaning my house. Uh, my kitchen needed to really be uh, cleaned up, so I did that. I did a lot of laundry, and I actually folded the shit, man. You can imagine that. But I need to make a couple bags. I just don't throw anything out when it comes to clothes, man. I need to make a couple bags up in drop them off at Goodwill or drive, do a drive-by down there where all the homeless people hang out. Uh, just chuck a fucking hefty bag out the window and keep on trucking, Jackson. Old droopy drawers may be able to get himself a pair of work pants, you know? I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, homeless people, man, and uh, the amount of people who are on the street. Well, when I was a kid, there was a place in Rhode Island called Sakanasset. And that's where they would, you know, that's where the people with mental illness would go. And, you know, they were, they were protected against themselves. Uh, they had a place to sleep every night. They would get the medications that they needed because a lot of them are schizophrenic. They have mental issues, man. And unfortunately, uh, back in the 80s, they cut out funding for that, man, and all these places shut down, and all of these people uh, spilled out onto the street. Uh, Salvation Army is 
is one of these places that will house these people, especially on cold nights. It'll give them a place to stay. But any, you know, it's not a stretch to say that anybody who's living on the street or sleeping under a bush somewhere or in an alcove uh, at, at a building, it's, it's safe. I think it's a, safe to say that they're probably suffering from men mental illness, most of them. Uh, the vast majority, but we don't, we don't care anymore. We seem to care more about dogs and pets than people, uh, to be honest with you, you know? It's tough for Johnny to stay focused on just plumbing. I'm such a, uh, asshole, you know? I just can't control myself. So let's see, let's do at least a couple hater mails, guys. It's 25 minutes. I'm going to try to cut this off. Let's see. Hater mail. It's hater mail time. Okay, so we got this new guy. I've never seen him before. Or well, maybe I have. It said the Ethiad Golden Showers. Yeah! Ha ha! I don't know what that means. I don't know what you're referring to. I know what a golden shower is. I'm thinking, you know, Donnie with his fascination with gold. Maybe he's had a few golden showers or given them. Can't help myself, guys. This one guy says, Mansfield, best flush valve ever made, period. And you know the spit was flying like... Period. I don't know, man. Mansfield flush valves seem to be a fucking pain in the ass to me. I never have those parts. This guy, I've learned to be a plumber by watching you. I'll pray for you, my friend. I'll pray for you. This guy, I love the plumbing content on your channel. You're every bit just as entertaining as Steve and Mikey. They do a lot more HVAC while you do actual plumbing. We appreciate the time and the trouble it takes to videotape and put out, put out this channel. Well, thanks, man. John Bloom, he's... You know, he commented 32 times yesterday. John. John. What are you doing, man? You know, take a walk around the block. Put some fucking pants on. Maybe an old fucking battleship gray t-shirt. Take a walk around the block. Get out of the house, man. guy said you were right on the money with everything you said this morning thanks man thanks man so this guy says uh, that man, I'm not even gonna go into politics I need to stop not for my just for my own good uh, I need to curb that he says uh, great video John you do the work of two men Laurel and Hardy well thank you I really appreciate it there Mr. Paul Medwell yeah this uh, Honolulu guy he's a man of few words He's commented, let's see, he's commented no less than a hundred times, and he always just says, thanks. That's it. Oh, this one, the same guy, great detailed video, thanks. 
Hey, you're welcome, man. So this guy says, your money will be worthless soon. You better buy another property someplace. Let's read more. Someplace else immediately. New van, too. Okay, thanks, buddy. You're my fucking new life coach. I think a couple of people around here uh, watch my channel and when they drive by my house they blow their fucking locomotive horns all the way by my house. I hear you. I see you. Yeah. I love you too. Guys, even though I'm going to try to curb my uh, desire to poke fun and to be an antagonist mainly uh, I mean it seems like the thing to do on both sides that's what we do we call each other names we try to get a chuckle out of it uh, but it's yard sign season Jackson and Johnny loves it last year I mean last election I had an old toilet and listen to what I listen to the lengths that I went to, to to fucking piss people off. So I live on the corner of a main street, you know? My backyard runs along this main drag and at least 5,000 cars a day go by here. So I had an old toilet. I go to Home Depot, I buy a can of fucking uh, spray foam. In a in a, a bag of like lightweight concrete, you know. So I take that fucking uh, toilet and I put it right out on the corner of my house, up against a tree. And I take the spray foam. I first then I went to uh, that party store and I bought a full head mask of Donald Trump. So I take the spray foam and I shoot it up into his neck. And fill that fucking head up like a balloon. So Donnie's sitting there in his big ass mug, you know, blown up. And what I did was when I put the foam in there, I put a stick in the in his neck, you know, like a backbone. Something he don't have. And, oh, sorry. Take it back. Anyway, so now I've got Donnie's head on a fucking broomstick, you know. So I mix up the mud. I pour it in the fucking toilet. I stick the stick down in the toilet so Donnie's head's in the toilet looking out at all these cars coming by my house every day. And I go to this sign store down the street and I walk in and they know who I am. They know I'm a little fucking off kilter when it comes to politics. I said, I need a sign made up. He's like, okay, what do you want this time, John? I said, I need a sign that says Flush this turd November 3rd. He's like, that's it? I was like, that's it, man. So I had this big ass sign nailed to the tree above fucking Donnie's head in the toilet. Flush this turd November 3rd. Yeah, and then I had another sign that said, after uh, Trump lost, at least the rest of the world knew he lost. He didn't, but I had a huge sign made up with uh, January 20th, 2021, the end of an error, E-R-R-O-R, -R -R. Uh, yeah. For you guys who don't get that, an era is E-R-A, you know, E-R-A. It's a, time, a span of time. Era is what you do when you throw the fucking ball to first base and it ends up, you know, 
up in row fucking 27. So I thought it was a great play on words, and that was a huge sign. But I will tell you that uh, one of my crazy, you know, the the crazy Trumpers, the guys with the sh with the fucking 44 Magnum sign in their front yard, and the Trump sign, and the fucking liberals are retarded, or it, being liberal is a fucking you know mental disorder. What the fuck are you talking about? I think one of them came over and literally picked my fucking toilet up with Donnie's head in it and smashed it on the ground. It's just not right, man. You do what you want, and I'll do what I want. But that's the antagonist in me. Uh, i got to stop it, but it is uh, yard sign season. And Johnny will be putting some yard signs up. I'll be happy to share them with you. Uh, maybe I will rekindle some of my old signs. I do save them. I love them. Uh, I do have a big sign for Obama in 2008. Uh, I have to admit I stole it. Uh, the sun went down the day after the election and I went and grabbed that motherfucker. It's on a commercial property, about six, seven feet long and three feet high. I was like, I'm taking that motherfucker for history. Yeah. Anyways, it's a beautiful day. I'm still a Democrat, but I'm going to curb my enthusiasm for uh, fighting or poking the bear or antagonism. I need to get my shit right because I'm being sucked off center <coughs> that's horrible cold coffee nasty all right guys so look at this look at the flow coming through my pump johnny's gonna go clean this shit up man because i'm getting in that spot today yes i am I hope you got a shot of that. I can never figure out where this camera is. So to all my fellow Americans, which that's really what we are. We, we've really been played by the powers that be, the media on both sides. Uh, it's a game for them. It, it keeps their ratings up. Uh, we're getting played, and I don't feel good, man. It, it's tomo. It's tumultuous. It's not good for us. It's not healthy. I mean, thank God I don't have television. I used to watch the news all the time, and I see people. I do service jobs, and I walk in, and they're sitting in their fucking chairs, the couch, and uh, the recliner like zombies. And they either have Fox News, well down here most of them are listening to Fox, I have to admit. I walk in and I see Fox and I think, I know where you stand, so I'll leave my Donald Trump jokes at the door. Once I get the check though, I can throw a little bit out there. But anyways, John is going to change his ways a little bit today. I'm going to call my buddy Alex, I'm going to say, listen guy. I really still want to kick your fucking ass, and that's why I fuck with you. I never forgot you when I was fucking 10 that you, you used to fucking fire slap shots at me. So uh, we can settle this. He's kind of old. He's on a walk. I'd like to, you know, I'm, I think I could take him now. I mean, he is on a walker. He uses a cane. He can't see. Uh... I'd fucking put one hand up over here and then come from this side with a fucking sucker shot and knock him the fuck out. Tip him off his, uh, his scooter. Which this guy, every day, he posts, he's got a bird. It's kind of strange shit, man, this dude. His, dog, his bird's name is Losey. And, uh, it's a little crazy, but he fucking runs out of... Power. He gets to the Walmart a mile and a half down the street, and uh, yeah, he runs out of fucking juice. 
And he's gonna push that fucking thing home. That is crazy, but I'll tell you what, given the opportunity, I think I'd kick his fucking ass, man. Just because of the slap shots. Johnny's got a long memory, man. I'm coming for you, Al. Coming for you, buddy. He may be in our 60s now, but I didn't fucking forget. I'm coming after you. And he's good with a, a hockey stick. Remember that during the insurrection, there was one guy with a hockey stick, you know? And Alex always prided himself on the fact that he could pluck your eyeball out with a fucking hockey stick. Uh, and he was really good. He was the best hockey player in our neighborhood. Uh, he was badass. He loved the Bruins, Bobby Orr, uh, fanatic, hockey fanatic, and he was good. We had teams, and we'd go from neighborhood to neighborhood playing other teams, and we'd have some fights, you know. We'd drop the gloves, throw them off, and fucking scrap a little bit, and then play. We were pretty good, man. I was never really good at playing hockey. I wasn't good at basketball. I loved football. Uh, I was really a fast runner. One of the fastest kids in the neighborhood. Uh, when you live in a tough ass neighborhood and you're a little white kid, you need to learn how to run motherfucking fast, Jack. People trying to steal your bike, trying to steal your fucking basketball, your football. Like, motherfuckers, you can't catch me. I'm laughing at them. Come on, motherfucker. Try to get me. Yeah. Fucked up life. It fucked up beginnings for me. But anyways, guys, it's Sunday. Let's let's be kind. No hater mail today. No hater mail Sunday. I won't get one comment. Without the hater mail, what is it? What's life? Have a good day.